And it's festive greetings from us here on the Morning Post, brought to you by the Racing Post and, of course, sponsored by William Hill. One more Saturday before Christmas strikes for you to enjoy out there. Really good cards, of course, at Ascot, Haydock, something on the all-weather at Lingfield. Go up to Newcastle if you want as well. This is the place to be for the next hour. Dave Orton, thrilled to be with you. Feeling very festive indeed. I'm joined by wise men. I'm joined by camels, if you like, as well. And we've got a very special guest or two for you coming on the line as well. Don't forget, this is a like, subscribe, comment and share interactive show. Have your ho, ho, ho. Let us know what's out there. You can do it if you're watching on YouTube. Get involved, like up, subscribe and the comments and the chats are there. Anything on Twitter, ramp up that hashtag, the morning pose. Righty ho, who's with me then this morning for the next hour? It is Paul Keeley, of course. Look, he's already on his phone, he's uh, looking for the best value I'm already. A little study up. Yeah. Absolutely. It's been an early start for you. You've got a long old day. We're yeah. looking forward to it all. Yeah, you have to look forward to all the Christmas action, don't you? And it starts with a really good card at Ascot today. But you know, but then we've got the big stuff at Kempton, Leopardstown, Chepstow. Oh. Uh, you know, you know, it is Christmas for us too, isn't it? And the Christmas moose, the bear, whatever you want to call it. Feeling festive, G-Rod? Feeling very festive, Dave. Yeah, I, I left my Christmas jumper at home this year. I love to come on wear my nice snowy one it's got like one of the you know those little things the slides that go down the ski slopes <laughs> it's got that on it but I, I left it at home i've just got the snowy one today but i'm looking forward to a great weekend and it's fantastic to be racing on 23rd of december it's we don't, usually off we don't usually race on 23rd december yeah, but here we are Yes, of course, Christmas falling on a Monday means we've got a super Saturday for you. Right, from William Hill, let's open up the trading floor. Top trader, Johnny the Judge, we called him. He's back in the betting game. Johnny Simpson joins us from William Hill. Morning, Dave. Thanks, to, thanks for that. Um, yeah, two good cows today and then uh, before the... Uh main event on Boxing Day and a, a real feast of racing for everyone. Let's get the boosts out of the way, Johnny, if you don't mind. What are they? Drum roll, please. Final two races at Ascot. Yeah, we've got two for the price of one today. We've got Blackjack Magic in the three o'clock at Ascot. It was 9-2. It's now 11-2. to two. And we've got Iberico Lord in the last race, the big betting race of the day. It was 3-1, to one, now 4-1. to one. £50 up until 12 o'clock. Away we go. There you go. If you've got your William Hill account, if not, open one up. You can get involved. JP, good thing in the last. That might curry favour. With our special guest who comes on the line, we have a William Hill ambassador for you. Let's get him on. Yes, it is one of the biggest names in the business. Nick Luck on Saturday joins us. Never mind Sunday. Nick, good morning to you. Hi, Dave. I'm very <coughs> for energy levels uh, this close to Christmas. Your, your stamina is holding out incredibly well. So I've got no excuses. Listen, that was long odds on that I would fail at this point. I think we've all kind of got the bugs out of the way. Hopefully, Nick, you're the same and feeling festive. And like G-Rod says, it's great to have a big Saturday, isn't it, this close to Christmas? We're betting. Yeah, I wonder if it'll intensify that call for there to be a big Christmas festival, including Ascot and Kempton. They tried, tried to kind of put that about, didn't they, about five or six years ago, but it didn't get much, much take up. I wonder if that'll make people focus their energy on that again. I think the card at Ascot's tremendous. We spent most of the season lamenting small fields, but the the lineup in the long walk is everything you want. All these established old boys, and then some of the young young guns coming through, seeing if they can cut it at this level. Yeah, okay. Was it Ted Walsh who said nobody ever breeds a horse to be a staying hurdler? I think it was, but. At least, at least the staying hurdle division's got some depth and competitiveness today. Uh, it really is two drives, Nick, is it? Of course, if you get... A, a Nick is a William Miller ambassador, guys. You do a betting blog, don't you, Nick? And I'm, I mean, I've been on the website this morning, the app and all that. You're absolutely all over it, man. I, I really enjoyed getting stuck into this card yesterday. I, I really did. I thought the long walk was hard. It took me a long time. And finally, I come down on a horse who's won it before and was kind of the obvious choice. Um, just because I thought he was a bit, bit too big, champ, at the odds. Uh, but elsewhere, I think there's some there's some really interesting races. And there's one I, I genuinely fancy a horse today at Haydock. So I'll, I'll keep that up my sleeve for a minute. Let's talk about what Nick Luck does then over Christmas. I can see you're at home, obviously, Nick. I assume you are. Um, I am. No broadcasting today. So is it is it feet up, last minute wrapping, and then all about Kempton coming up? Dave, it's the only, it's the only time of the year where I feel a little bit lazy. Uh, although I reckon, I've, I reckon I've earned it. But... Um, I, I do give myself a fairly easy time over Christmas. So I, I don't work today, tomorrow, obviously not Christmas Day. And then <clears throat> Boxing Day, I used to love going to Kempton as a kid. I went every year from when I was about four to probably 21. Uh, I think the first 
um, King George I saw live was the three runner one with um, Borough Hill Labway with Lad and Coombs oh. Ditch. Do you remember that? Yep. Well, Kielswood. Well, I mean, well, uh, Kielswood. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Borough Hill Lads just edged out Coombs Ditch, did you not? Exactly. Wayward Lad was disappointing. It was the one he didn't win and he won the year after and he'd won the two years previously. Um, so I, I sort of felt I had like my complete fill of boxing day at Kempton. And then, you know, as you get older and have family and everything, you think, well, I just want to give myself an extra day. So I, I tend not to work on boxing day. And I, I try and do that Dorothy Paget thing of not <laughs> of not knowing any of the results until the evening. <laughs> and turning my phone off and not looking at Twitter or whatever. And then hope that I can I can watch it all through without knowing any of the results. Um, which was quite fun the year I backed Edred on Blur, but that was probably about the last win of the race I backed. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then well, Kempton 27th, Newbury the 30th for Chalo Hurdle Day, and then see what 2024 holds. Oh, fantastic. All right, great stuff. And, of course, you'll be able to get your blog, of course, in the morning, your podcast, your award-winning podcast, which now seems to break before we do at the Racing Post insufferably. Have you got any pearls of wisdom coming up on that for us? Well, I... <laughs> We've been having quite a lot of fun with this where will Jerry Colomb run this week, haven't we? And we're getting wrong-footed every step of the way. Yeah, Got the news that he would definitely go to Kempton and then the news that he might go to Tremor and then finally the news that he was going to go to Leopardstown. I did ask his owner this morning, Brian Atchison, if Leopardstown was definite. He sent me the turf tracks graphic of the going at Kempton, I think as if to say, well, I think we're still going to Leopardstown, which might yet be quicker than Kempton anyway. I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, I, I was kind of half wanting him to say, no, we're still going to go to Tremor. But no, no, no exclusive. I, I, I put the exclusives on hold until next Wednesday. Hey, it's one of the absolute highlights of Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> going to Dremore, I think. Let's see what Willie's got for that. Let's talk about today then, Nick. Let's hone in on your tips if you don't Monk mind. Monkfish goes to Tremor, Dave. Say that again, Nick. Sorry, I, I, I Monk, missed that. Monk, Monkfish goes to Tremor. Does he now? Yes. Oh, the old okay. monkey, he's back. Uh, it, it, the fish. You should have told me that. Well, I wouldn't have the faintest idea. I'm sure the owners only just found out. You know what they're like over there. Yeah, well, OK. We'll expect him to go off fives <coughs> on like, like Album Photo used to do. All right, first pearl from Nick then. let's. What have you actually put up on the website? Here? You've teased us with Champ. I suppose the first time out angle, FA Cup final for him, having had the wind up. Well, there's two angles here, aren't there? It's how good do you think all these young pretenders are and do you think they're genuine championship horses? And I'm not sure there's enough evidence to think that a horse like Crambo is a championship horse at, at the moment. Of all those of all those horses coming in from left field, the one that I was half interested in at the prices was Gowell Road because um, I just think he's a sort of horse that saves so much for himself and he's never giving you the whole lot. And actually a race like this could suit him down to the ground because they'll go quick. And he'll just keep keep going, keep finding, keep finding under pressure. The yard's having an amazing season. The jockey's riding full of confidence, Gavin Sheehan. So I thought he was the interesting one at the odds. But I just thought the race is going to have, I'd say, several leaders. There's going to be a contested pace. I think it'll peel away and Champ will just sit there on the bridle. First time out, wind operation. His record seasonal debut. I think he's had five wins on, on his seasonal yeah. debut. OK, if he was nine to four or something, I'd say, well... He's 11 now. Surely there's something with younger legs that can come to beat him. But when I look, like, what price is he now, Dave? That's a good question. What is he run about? Nine to two, yeah, something like that? Two, five to one, isn't he? Same yeah. I mean, I, I, I see the race exactly the same as Nick. I just <laughs> think um, Paisley Park will nab him after the last. Well, look, there we go. Yeah. We're going to preview that in, in its entirety. <coughs> but Nick, you're showing your sort of tipping side there, which not not all, not everyone sees this about you, Nick, of course, because you're be usually fronting thing. all the shows and stuff. Well, I guess we can get you all through Christmas at William Hill, can we? You can get me all through Christmas at William Hill. Yeah, no, I'm going to do... Uh, the, the great thing now, with, with the Irish racing being so important to British viewers, is that you're getting top quality racing every day, pretty much, from Christmas to New Year, aren't you? And ITV really getting stuck into it as well. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful window that's being exploited by the sport, um, both sides of the Irish Sea, to be able to get all the best from here, all the best from Ireland in front of a free-to-air audience. So it's a it's a good time of the year, I think, for, for racing to, to showcase itself. There's a lot of nodding going on from the wise men next to me on the on the sofa, by the way, as you're talking. Is Champ the nap, or is, is that a next no. best? Where do we... Oh, OK, no, what is? I, no, I don't think he's the next best either. I, I think um, there's a horse running at Haydock called Bois Gilbert, um, trained by Lucinda Russell. Now, I, I don't think this horse is the finished article. He's quite... Uh, physically, I think he's still quite raw but i think he's got loads of ability they ran him massively wrong at the weights in that conditions race at the showcase music at cheltenham <clears throat> and he actually ran quite well he could have gone up the handicapper could have put him up but didn't 
Um, I think under those new rules, which stop them doing it if if they don't win, whatever it is. And um, and so that means he races off a, a mark in the low 120s. He's definitely worth more than that. The race has worked out ridiculously well. It was the race won by Blue King Daru. And the horse that finished behind uh, Bois Gilbert has gone off, gone out and won off a, a higher mark and bolted up in a handicap since. So I, I think the handicap has um, you know, been obliged to let him in lightly here. And I, I'd be amazed if a flat attract didn't suit him better. So Bois Gilbert is the, the nap. And Iberico Lord, um, I think he's just going to win again. You're getting a boost then. But you really kept that in the William Hill family there. Lucinda, another ambassador, of course. And the mm. boost is Iberico Lord in the last. Uh, right. uh, hang on, Nicky, Nicky Anderson's not part of the family yet. Is he in, in Well. <laughs> well, I <don't>, uh, <laughs> I mean, let's not go there. <laughs> is, that an ex- is, that an exclusive, is that an exclusive to, to this show? <laughs> Ed Nicholson <laughs> just spat out his eggnog. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ed, only, Ed only lives about half a mile down there, so he can come and... Come on, back, bang on my door in a minute. If we see a red dot coming on your chest in a minute, we know where it's come from. <laughs> Nick, absolutely fantastic to have you on. This won't be the last time we have you here on the, on the Morning Post. All you and yours, Merry Christmas. It's been a fabulous 23 again for you. Looking forward to seeing what next year brings and also hearing you broadcasting over Christmas time. Well, hopefully I can, um, I, I can get a bit fitter in the first couple of weeks of January because it's been a December of excess so far. Uh, Dave, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks so much. Brilliant. Nick Luck then. There you go. William and Ambassador coming to you at festive time. This is going to be a brilliant show. Should we ramp it up from Nick? It's going to be difficult, isn't it? Let's get some socials, though. You're all beavering away out there, letting your messages come in. Merry Christmas, everybody. Great racing over the next few days. Bring it on, says C.T. Grogan. Magnificent stuff. Merry Christmas to you, C.T. Keels and Hot Rod, says Trevor Clark. Trev, morning and Merry Christmas to you. You are a bit insufferably hot as well yourself, aren't you? I did <laughs> think I'd ever be saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three out of three the other day. I mean, you know, every dog, broken clocks and all that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I feel it's actually the first time I've ever had a clean sweep in the paper. You know, all of them win. I mean, you've been working for 30 years. I, just, yeah, so, I wouldn't be jumping in that one. <laughs> no, but it's great because the, the amount of people that do do these tips in multiples. Yeah. So if you do get them all, it can turn into a real big payday. So I hope a few people did have a good day on Monday. Well, is that right? Did you, have you given up by now or did you do it? But let's let, let's keep with you on this because me and Kills need to, we need to, this is our moment, I think, Kills, but you're you're on a four-timer with your naps. Yeah, last three naps on this show have all won as well. I mean, I, you know, I'm not one to blow my own trumpet, of course, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, going for four nap, four winning naps in a row. So So stay tuned, viewers, if you want to see Number four coming up. All right, and you're in the paper today. Shall we see what this Saturday brings you in the Racing Post? Here is the last festive Saturday at the Racing Post. And what a front page is. All the biggest names are there. We've got Dave Jennings coming on the line as usual for the Irish angle. It will be an extended one for you as well. So many darts have we got to throw at that. Paisley, of course, is back against champ round six. Scott Burton, page two. A Christmas undercard to savour as old stages do battle again. Yes, it is the clash of the generations. Stick with us to see what the panel think will come out on top. And there he is, Hot Rod himself. Oh, God, we've got to get rid of that. The Howdon Long War Colonel. Can Crambo kick in the turbo or will Bill Bauer come out fighting like that, Rocky? Uh, Honeyball says Blackjack has strong chance but softer going would be ideal. That is, of course, the preview done today by Richard Birch. Good old Birchy. And Botox has. There he is. He was with us last Saturday. Jolly Dean's column uh, looks a 10 to 1 gift to trounce. Long walk rivals. Didn't see Botox has been the pick for Johnny. And keeping the seat one for Tom Siegel until uh, Welsh National Day. Haydock Slog, says Keith Melrose, can bring out the best in Credo. Very well back, Credo has been for Honeyball. Uh, and here we are. The excellent Kevin Morley. Vetra. And this is very important, guys, this column today with Kevin, because it is a completely mishmash trend-wise of these races. But Veteran Paisley Park can hit the jackpot for a fourth time. If you want to get involved, the digital edition has been out there since 9pm, but you can do so by signing up, of course. The member's offer is still out there. Get involved. And, of course, all right, um, all right what have we got coming up at Haydock, then? Plenty. What are we expecting the ground to be up at ADOT today, but It'll be bottomless. Tested. Yeah. Completely bottomless. It's bottomless, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very bad. <sighs> Is this Kirtland's last meeting? Uh, Maybe. I, I was talking to Mel Rose about this, um, our betting editor, of course, and he uh, considers himself a bit of an expert on a lot of things, but ADOT going 
is certainly one of his specialist subjects. Mm. And he reckons that this year the Haydock going has not been as bad as it usually is. He reckons that most seasons it's obviously absolutely Haydock heavy bottomless. But they, he reckons this year it's been a lot better there. So maybe it won't be as tested as we think it's going to be, Gills. Well, I didn't know the word microclimate really was a thing until recently, but everyone seems to think Haydock has its own microclimate. Well, I mean, they say the same about Cheltenham and, and whatever with the, you know, clouds coming over the hills, etc. I think we think certain places. Haydock does seem to get incredibly unlucky when it comes to amounts of rain at times, doesn't it? Kirk, Kirkland's just got a, a, one of those clouds, but like yeah. a cartoon character. But yeah, I mean, I think you know, I, I think it's it's expected to be heavier today than it has been for a while. I think that's that, that was the general feeling. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, won't we? All right. Well, let's preview, uh, shall we? Uh, we're going to do the uh, the Tommy Whittle before we go and beam into live to the track for Mascot to find out what the ground's doing there in complete contrast down in Berkshire. But uh, Johnny Simpson, let's bring you in, Johnny the Judge. Then uh, and one thirty at Haydock. It is the Tommy Whittle long-standing handicap. You're going to get some strong opinions, my old son, from the sofa. But what's the market saying? Well, the market's screaming in the favour of two horses here: Eleanor Bob and Bill Baxter. Bill Baxter was near, was eight to one when the market went up. Now into five to one, and uh, Eleanor Bob uh, eleven to two now for really strong support for both of those. Okay, Johnny, what do you like? Uh, famous bridge for me. I think a nice progressive chaser. Those famous colours at Haydock. That'll do. All right, Johnny, the judge. Then he's got a great record on this. He's got he's had winning naps as well. He, whenever he puts a boost up, I mean William Hill with these boosts, it's been everywhere I go now. People are saying, "What's the boost going to be?" Oh, the boost, the boost is just always. I don't know. They're like the Bismarcks. Do you remember them mm. back in the day? Good, you've got a great record. I think only one has sunk for William Hill so far. Can today be the day? But this famous bridge, ver, uh, kills comes to you very much an old-fashioned Nicky Richards stereotypical embryonic. All those words. I mm. remember being told when he was in his bumper that this was one of the best horses in the yard. He took a little time to show it, didn't he? Yeah, and he's really, he started to show it now, and obviously it was a good battling win, but he only won by a length from Credo, and the money for Eleanor Bob was interesting because he was only fourth. Um, so I can't really understand why he'd be favourite, uh, sorry, second favourite ahead of Credo on, on, on that evidence. Uh, but there are others to be interested in as well. I know I'm, 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 I'd rather give you the case with Bill Baxter, I'm sure, but I was interested in a couple of double-figure prices because... Encard came back and came in from the cold after a wind operation last time at, yeah. at Warwick, where he was given a really patient ride. Uh, sometimes, you know, not that easy to do sometimes at Warwick as well, given they've only got two in, in a short straight. Uh, and he's a pound lower than winning, winning the race by 10 lengths the last time it was run. Uh, and Burroughs Diamond just interests me because she's dropped seven pounds this season. And I'm on smiling. the pick of her form when beating Shanty Alley last year and finishing second at Newcastle on heavy ground, I, I think she's pretty well handicapped if she runs a race. We watched that Aintree race last time together, didn't we, over mm. a couple of Guinnesses, and yeah. Zambella was sauntering through it, and if there was one horse that was going to trouble her, it yeah. was Burroughs Diamond. She yeah, and she had no right to be troubling yeah. her over two and a half mile Aintree. You know? I've so got a funny feeling she's going to run a big race. big race, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's Burroughs Diamond for me, and Keels, and with a little on guard. He's become a bit of a standing dish around here on guard, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he runs the track well, and like I said, he's, he's a pound load, and when we're, Winning it, but thrashing remastered as well, by the uh, way. So a horse has been placed in, in, yeah. a, in, a, in a couple of gold, gold cups. And the stable have got their horses right for this new partnership, of course, that's being branded mm. out there. Uh, G-Rod then, Bill Baxter, the Topham winner. Yeah, Bill Baxter for me. Um, yeah, won the Topham. Warren Greatress has got a ridiculously good record last year or so with chasers. I don't know whether he's doing something different on it, but he's over 20-odd percent with all of his runners in chases. This one was obviously one of his big standouts last year. Running two races this season, first time out, I thought it was a very good race, the one that Thunder Rock beat uh, Marla Mission. You were trying to give him £7, I think. It was impossible at the weights. He was really wrong at them. Um, Marla Mission obviously went on to finish second, didn't he, in the Coral Gold Cup. Mm -hmm. Thunder Rock was absolutely awful, wasn't he, last week? Oh. Didn't, didn't jump a single fence and never go in, but I still think that he's quite a talented horse on his day. That was two and a half, wasn't it? And then Bill Baxter last time ran in the Coral Gold Cup itself behind Marla Mission and That's All Right Gino finished eighth. It was a pretty good effort in a stronger race than this. I mean, the, the Coral Gold Cup as compared to this Tommy Whittle, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? I mean, he's going to find it so much easier going through this race than he is going through that higher quality uh, event. And he's gone down three pound in the weights for that defeat which gets him in nicely at the top of the weight. So I, I like these 
these horses that, that have got that class angle in these handicaps, just the ability to travel through these races. Get into a rhythm, get into see a it so rhythm. much. You see it so often, we saw it with Stage Star, didn't we, at the start of the season, the Paddy Power. If you can just get into that nice rhythm, travel nicely up with the pace, you're always going to have a chance coming to two out, and that's all you can ask for. So I'm quite confident Bill Baxter will win this, Dave. A range of tips then for you in the feature race at Haydock today. It's going to be hock deep there. So it's famous bridge for Johnny and myself and Kills like Burroughs Diamond. Kills will also have a Dutch up on, on guard for you as well. And Strong is Hot Rod on Bill Baxter. Now a completely contrasting scene awaits us at uh, the home of Berkshire Jump Racing. I'm going to say that. It's my famous favourite jumps track is Ascot and yesterday was a pleasure covering it there. The crowd was absolutely jam-packed to the rafters uh, and we can now go live to the tracks for you. There is the weather graphic there and I'm delighted to say making her morning post debut. Maddie Plowler waits on the line. There's a tumbleweed. There's a Christmas tumbleweed. Maddie are you there? Hi Dave. <laughs> can you hear me? We've just about got you, Maddie. We can see you on the screen as well. Don't fear that. First and foremost, Madge, you're at the track now. What's it like walking in? There was a... <laughs> we might be having a few gremlins with Maddie from the track. Let's let the guys pick that up, shall we, while we go there. Uh, I think Maddie is about to tell us. Come on, you're our... Our Michael Fish, if you like, uh, our Ian McCaskill. There you go. I'm, I'm channeling it for you. Uh, it's it, it's always a worry with Ascot, isn't there, that when it's dry over the night, that trainers well, are going dry. to have a bit of a moan up. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see in the early races, but it's been dry, and they know that it's borderline good ground anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, they they, they declared on what they knew it was going to be. I think so. Mm, um, Nick Nick obviously talking about the big fields, G, so we need to hope that's the case. But you wouldn't be surprised, would you? No, no, it wouldn't be a surprise at all, would it? No. But, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens, won't it? All right, brilliantly filled, gentlemen. Let's let's try Maddie again. Mads, have you found a better signal for us? I've not. I've, t I've turned the Wi-Fi off. I'm now on 4G. Hey. Can you hear me now, Dave? We got you. We got you. Festive greetings, Mads. Now, uh, uh, let's rewind. What's it like walking into Ascot this morning? Uh, very quiet, but much nicer weather than yesterday. It's quite brightened up. Um, beautiful day. And, yeah, really looking forward to it. Quite windy, though. Um, the ground seemed to dry out throughout racing a little bit yesterday. And um, the going stick readings would suggest it's dried out again today. Um, but it still should be quite hard work in these conditions. Some horses finished quite tired yesterday. And no doubt it will be the case again today. That horrible word tacky might appear in your report, Mads. You'll be beavering away for us then at the post all day. What are you most looking forward to? I guess we've got to start with your take on the long walk. Yeah, it's a market that's fascinated me all week, to be honest, because Crambo and West Balboa have been towards the head of it. Yet on the figures, they've actually got quite a bit to find with the old guard, the two 11-year-olds, Paisley Park and Champ. Uh, I was hugely encouraged by Paisley Park's effort in the long-distance hurdle at Newbury last time, considering he was penalised. And we often see him go well in that race and then just really come on for the run, as he did um, when winning this race last year at Kempton when it was run on Boxing Day. So I think the old guard are being underestimated a bit. Champ, he goes so well fresh. And Paisley Park, he still looks the force of old, more or less, um, at the age of 11. So... I think if you're looking to, to back a horse in this race, I'd rather go with the proven performers than those who, who have it to do on the figures for all that they promised a great deal. But it's good that there's a nice big field for a race like this, and there's plenty of depth to it too. Yeah, big fields all over the place. We just had Nick Luck on. He was championing the fact, thank goodness for that. Now, I, I know you, Mads. Obviously, we've got the, at a graduation chase, only three in that, but forget that. We've got Solo. I'm assuming that most people will be going there to maybe have the Christmas money on Solo. You'll probably be interested in the opener, Maddie, knowing you and some other races as well. Where is the Maddie Christmas Fiver going? Oh, do you know, it's so difficult, but there's one horse who I really hoped he'd go for the Welsh Grand National, and he hasn't, and he... Gonna keep us in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mads. Mads, just as you were about to reveal the name, you went again. Are you there? <laughs> Oh, we lost connection. I we, know, we need run. to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get driving mad. 
Am I back? Mad? There she is. I'm yeah. so sorry. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Ascot How much could be a bit here? like this, by the way. You, you've done well. We, we yeah, always go like this when we go live to Ascot. Oh, I'm so sorry. All I'll right, start uh, again. Just give us the name of the horse that should have run and won the Welsh <laughs> National. Black Jack Magic for All Anthony right. Honeyball. Yes, um, I thought he won the Badger Beers with loads in hand last time. Probably would prefer the ground a little bit softer, but I don't think it's going to be any real concern for him. I just think he's still really well handicapped. I think he's a stare on the up. And I can't wait to see what he'll do over marathon trips. But I can understand why the train has gone for this race, given he has such a good record in it. We've had two outside guests on so far. One's gone for a Berico Lord. That was Nitluck. Boosted. Maddie, it's been boosted at William Hill. If you've got an account, get on, I suggest. Up until midday, I think they're, they're going somewhere like 13 to 2, something like that. Get involved. 11 to 2. I, I will have... Oh, I was going to say 13 to 2. I'll definitely get involved there. 11 to 2 is tempting, but not quite as much. Yeah, OK, you get, uh, 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 all this, the producers go absolutely mad when I do that. All right, OK, Mads, it's great to have you on. What time can we get your report? Of course, of course, we've got the really good handicap at the end. You should be filing around about... Oh, about an hour after the last, I think. Um, but could be for some early takes if there's any particularly dramatic racing today. But it's a grade one card and there's lots of depth on the rate for the races on the undercard. So can't wait. Brilliant stuff, Maddie. I'll tell you what, I heard it was lively you there yesterday, Maddie, with the crowd. You watch out and Merry Christmas to you. And you, Dave, and you guys in the studio. Thanks very much. Have a good day. Brilliant. Well, when the Wi-Fi connection was good, so was Maddie Plale. Brilliant stuff. That was live to the track. Said, let's get on with our preview then and start off with the long walk hurdle. It is at 2.25. Loads have been said about it so far on the show already. Johnny, overnight, this is the beauty of the Morning Post, I say every week. We now know it's matured this market. Crambo, what, 7-2 to two joints with West Balboa. Yeah, as Maddie says, what a fascinating market this is. When we put it up a few weeks ago, Crambo and West Balbo were just knocked over. There's no interest in any other horses by those two. Uh, following decks, um, we can't give them away now. Both 72 and really weak. Uh, the big mover here is Blue King Daru for Paul Nichols. 16 into eight. It's really strong support for that. Ooh, okay. Four year old winner of the long walk. All right, let's get what the lads think Most about it finally. Sapping three mile there, hurdle of the season. There have been two four year olds win this race. Take it away. 1995 Silver Wedge. Silver Wedge. Yeah. Yeah. 1996. The name escapes me now, but I did I did write it in my piece. You delved today. it back, did you? Yeah, yeah I mean, he well has. No, should, should, should we start with him then? Because he has been something of a freak, hasn't he? Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's funny. I mean, it, was, it was just over a year ago now that I, I bumped into Johnny De La Haye at, uh, uh, doing London, and he said, I think got a really good horse, Blue King De Woo. And then, of course, he came out a couple of days, literally a couple of days later, and, and pulled up at Cheltenham, and, and he was going nowhere. And then, suddenly, at the end of the season, he wins a handicap at 50 to 1. And, uh, uh, at Asker, and now he just keep going on and on and on, isn't he? And and he was impressive last time. I backed Taffodil that day when he was fifty to one, and mm. I thought, oh, sod's law, isn't it? He was a stable mate, of course, but he has proven himself. I think last time out, he, he, it had to be here though, didn't it? Where else do they go with mm. him now? Yeah, no, he stepped up. He looked like he stayed, but again, and what was that? Two, three, two, four. Well, you know, it's a, it's a big difference, isn't it? So let's start with the overlook of the race. OK, we've got him at four. We've got the old stages, if you like. Dashiell Drasher and Paisley Park, who fought it out, of course, at Newbury, which is usually the, the traditional champ and Paisley Park dust up. We've got the older horses who, on official ratings, guys, the handicapper says they're home and hosed already. Those three will be jumping the last and fighting it out again. And yet we have got the up-and-comers. And this is always a division, isn't it, that looks wide open unless you've got the one 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 Oz, like Thistlecrap, Big Bucks, Barracuda. We don't have one of them at the moment. Is there a youngster emerging who could be? It's not going to be a massive surprise if a handicapper breaks through the ranks and ends up winning the Stairs Hurdle in March. But the market is suggesting that we found them already and the evidence of what they've done on the track suggests not. I mean... No matter how unlucky Crambo was, for instance, at Haydock last time, he still got beaten a handicap off a mark of 139, and now he's at the head of a market off levels against horses rated as high as 159, uh, when he should be carrying, you know, seven, I think, 17 pounds less than Dash or Dasher. It's hard to think of a bigger profile eye catcher than that handicap that Paisley won up at, uh, yeah. on Betfair Chase Day, right? Oh, he was a massive eye catcher, wasn't he, Crambo? Um, he ran the final furlong 1.32 seconds faster than the winner. He ran the quickest final furlong on the whole card. 
and he was clearly caught out of his ground, although... He took time to get wound yes, up, though, didn't he? He hit a flat spot and then flew home. Ah, now, can I reference your headline, please? Because mm. it's something that I saw when I was reading your piece in the paper mm. today. Because a couple of years ago, you coined the turbo phrase with Paisley Park. Yes. Have well, we got the next... I'm, is this I, the new turbo? See, I'm a big believer, we were staying hurdlers, that the very, very best of them hit flat spots and then they fly home. They kick in that turbo, Dave, late. And I thought that day, that was what I saw from Cranbar. I saw that flat spot and then I saw that turbo kick in. And that yeah. made me think this could always could be a future Stayers Hurdle winner. You've backed him for the Stayers, haven't you? And I have backed him for the Stayers. But, but? But my worry is here, this is, as Keel says, a huge step up in class. He's still making his progress, pro progress, isn't he? He's not there yet. And I just wonder if he might run an absolute storm of flying home here finish second or third, and then go to Cheltenham, maybe for the Cleave, and, and, and progress further as he goes. So I could easily see him getting beaten here and then winning the Stayers. Yeah, I think this is a really polarising race for you guys out there. I want to hear from you out there. Come it's on. It's what wins this? Let us know. We'll give you a shout-out by the end of it. It's polarising because of the prices. And you see, in the old days, you'd have a horse like Crambo. you think, I might have a little go at him each way at 10 to 1. Yeah. All right? Because that's the price he should be. Yeah. Of a, totally horse, rated, a horse rated 142. <laughs> Uh, so, so, but he isn't. As a tipster, what do we do with the race then, right? Well, well how do we... Cause... Well, I mean, as a punter, I cannot back horses with a stone to find at the head of the market against horses with proven form. On just the premise that and, they might improve. Yeah, and obviously, as Nick Luck said, Champ's record first time out is brilliant. He's won one of these. Uh, he beat Paisley Park first time up last season. Uh, but Paisley Park, that was his first time out for Paisley Park. Paisley Park's now had a run. Uh, he, he was given six pound of Dashwood Drasher, just failed to catch him in the long distance. Sorry, the long walk. No, the long distance. This is the long walk. Uh, and then he won the long walk at Kempton. And of course, we all thought last year it wouldn't suit him at all. Even the trainer was worried about it. And he bolted up, turned the form around dramatically. He's won two of these here as well. Um, I just think it's an amazing price at six to one. I really do. And I will be, I will be playing the old boy forecast as well, I think. Champs had one run here. He got beaten by vindication in a novice hurdle, so he has got course form. But yeah, he won I, it here as well. Did, what, he won Champ it won this race yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. When it was he here. beat Paisley yeah. Park. Yeah. When was this? Yeah. Um, Hang on. Oh yeah, December eighteenth. You, you have to go look right. a long way down the form lines for these old boys. You are right. You, to find it. No, yeah. no, I'm with you. <coughs> I think Paisley is the bet here. I love Dashwood Drasher. The ground is a slight concern for him. I know that they sort of changed tack a little bit with him after he got beaten at Weatherby. He's got to be my favourite horse in training, I think, Dashwood Drasher. He's, he's a just he's terrific just horse. Magnificent. Mm. Each terrific year horse. we get them so royals the same, and they mix between fences and hurdles. They take their racing brilliantly. He's an old... They probably never had to pay uh, training fees ever with him. You know, he's just an amazing horse. But I do think Paisley will reverse that form. Uh, so it's Paisley for me and Keels. He was Gee giving was. him weight, wasn't he, as well? Yeah. Um, see, this is where Keels and I probably differ in our approach, really, in that I can obviously see why you would back or, or tip horses like Paisley Park and Champ. And I just don't think they can win, Dave. Like, I just think they're, you know, they've had their day. It's part, they're, they're all obviously past their best. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You're bitter about Paisley Park now because I remember being with you on Boxing Day when this move uh, was moved yes, to Kenton yes. and you went against him and I tipped him and you've never forgiven me and you've never forgiven the well, horse I, I and you're showing your true colours. I here. absolutely love Paisley Park and uh, if, he, if he passes the post in front today, the roof will come off at Ascot and I'll be happy as Larry for, for him and the owners and the trainer. But... It's just not going to happen, is it? I mean, why be it? realistic. It's, it's not going to happen. The turbo's it? kicking in, this is, going to the last this and he wins. Thing, why is it going to happen? He's running against horses that he would be giving a stone to in a handicap and you're expecting them to beat him. And the market is expecting them to beat him. That's what I don't understand. But, but the, the point is, is that what they've done last year or in the past doesn't matter, does it? What I mean, he did... What, what matters is what's going to happen this afternoon. was the best part of a stone better than what Crambo did last yeah, But it was like, that was a geriatric <laughs> race. It's heating up in here. It was a, geri it was a geriatric race, like Dashiell Drasher and, and Champ and, yeah. race. And, and, and Paisley and, yeah, oh, you know, I mean... Oh, we're, we're, we're waiting for something to come through and it could be one of these two. I mean, shouldn't we, I think West Bale Bale's got a miles better chance than Crambo. Yeah, sorry. Take yeah. it away, Anyway, I, sh I should tell you why West Bale Bale is going to win, shouldn't I? Um... I like the two, the two youngsters. Uh, I, I think that they're... I, I, I can see the argument about why them being too short, but I think they're by far the two most likely winners in the race. 
and I think that West Balboa has got a slightly better chance at this track than Crambo because I think that all of her best form has come on flat tracks. She has got form around Sandown though, which is a stiff uphill is she finish. she a mudlark? Right-handed track. I don't think she's a mudlark, no. I mean, mm. she won last year at, at Aintree. I know it was, it was soft, but I mean, it never gets really tested at Aintree. She's won three in a row. She's coming forward. She's a, Her best run was the one at Aintree over three mile half furlong. Last time out, she dropped back to two and a half. I don't think that would have suited her at all, the trip there, but she went through it like a good all. She put did, 12 yeah. lengths on, she did. on brewing up a storm. She's getting the seven pound mare's allowance. They'll be very confident after that bumper. This is surely say, her day, it. isn't it? Like, this right. is her, you talk about champs FA Cup final. This is surely West Balboa. I think this race, more than the stayers, is West Balboa's race. And I think she'll win here. I think Cranbo will chase her home. And then I think Cranbo will win the stayers. <laughs> You've heard it here first, all right. <laughs> that is the long walk, Colonel. Shall we, sh shall we move on? We're, we're hearing that the um, uh, that the decks for the King George are coming in. We will be talking about Christmas action after the Irish angle and uh, all the decks are out. So stick with us for that. It's breaking, this is. Let's go now. now one of the handicaps of the Christmas meeting, though, it is the Howden Silver Cup. Uh, Johnny, Johnny the judge, let's come to you. You've got seven to two, Victoriana. I've seen him bigger elsewhere. That means you're not happy to be laying this chap. Yeah, this is a, a live move in the last sort of 20 minutes since we've been on air. Uh, seven to two from five to one. Uh, looks a bit short to me that now. Um, the the, the, uh, the boost at Blackjack Magic is, is proving really popular at 11 to two. Um, but the two for money are Git Maker and Yeah Man. And yeah, man, of course, you come to grief. I mean, this is a right old handicap, this, isn't it? And you could have three or four stabs and still be wrong on it. G-Rod, let's come to you. What tickles your Christmas fancy? Well, I've been on this Lingfield race bandwagon for a while. The one that Gitmaker won uh, at Lingfield last time. He beat also called Super Survivor, mm. um, who's trained by the same trainer, Jamie Snowden. Um, I tipped Super Survivor that day on Pricewise Extra and got the wrong one of the two Snowden horses. They smashed Super Survivor. Gitmaker drifted and then Gitmaker made all under Sheehan and Super Survivor ran an eye catching race in second. I backed the third from that race because I think it's a good race at Cheltenham last week in a mare's handicap chase called Eureka Creek. She looked like she was going to win. She was in front of the last and got run down by that Irish thing that had mild <coughs> loads in hand, you know, the Gavin Cromwell winner. Malmaison or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, La Malmaison. So that, I think that is the best piece of form in this race. The, um, the git maker beating Super Survivor, who's favourite for the Coral Welsh Grand National, and Eureka Creek, who came out and ran well at Cheltenham. So I'm all over the git. <laughs> yeah, you're a lovely old git. <laughs> I've spoken to Jamie Snowden about that horse's name before, and I think they called him the old git in the, in the <laughs> stable. He's a very prolific horse kills, isn't he? And it's forms Yeah, he's a good horse. You can easily make a case for him. I mean, if, if you can make a case for loads. I mean, like Maddie said, back to magic. We, we backed him at uh, uh, Wink and he did win with a bit up his sleeve. Yeah, man, could well have caught Victorino last time if not coming down because he was he, he was really picking up. Um, Ground's a lot quicker though. Um, I half toyed with Phlegmatic because he's always oh, got a big running him on. He's got a big running him on, on good ground, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, I was with him last um, time and he just he probably bumped into but, one, didn't he? You know, he? Larry's one of those horses as an Ascot horse. He's two wins, two thirds to his name of seven starts. His wins, he won very easily both times from marks of 132. He's one pound higher now. Yes, he's a bit older, but I liked that run at Sandown last time. He looked the only danger to good boy Bobby coming coming round the bend. Just we all knew he was going to tip Larry, didn't we? I, I, don't think I've ever tipped, I don't think I've ever tipped Larry. No, just it's your sort of tip, this. <laughs> what year are we in? Are we in 2019? <laughs> How old's Larry? Is it about 15, is he, Larry? Is it? <laughs> Paisley <laughs> Park, 12. It is sometimes hard to know <laughs> in his studio. 11. 12, 12 next week. Still the best all right, race, as all you right. See. Larry's 11 next week. Let's get the tips out of the way then. Um, no one going for the fad. Uh, no, I don't think we are, are we? Oh, right, okay. We'll be no, talking about Johnny the Judge. What's he on? Well, we'll get to Johnny the Judge because he does like one in this, but we're going to save it till the end because it's boosted. And I'll get the price rise boost about that correct. Uh, Larry. Larry. I've, I've had a few goodies around Larry. For Team Moore. I'm on the get. For Team Snowden. Yeah. I think yeah man will go close. I think he I think he was just warming up really when he hit the last last time out. And, and another one, Phil. I thought Flash Colange had been totally overlooked in the market. 
Crawl, crawl yeah, I thought he had a chance. Was. Yeah, I thought he had a chance. He loved the ground, I think. Yeah. And uh, I don't Nichols. think we've seen the best of him yet. Mm. Uh, as I nearly went into a South African accent for some reason. All right, OK, let's go to the last race then. It is the Betfair Exchange Trophy. This is kind of on the road to these brilliant two-mile staying handicap hurdles. And, uh, well, it is the Greatwood winner. And you've boosted it, a Berico Lord Johnny. You've been knocked over for this yet. Nick Luck likes it as well. We are. Both the boosts today are uh, proving extremely popular. So we'll be uh, hoping we can get a result here. Uh, we're paying four places here to finish uh, finish the card. Uh and the two big movers are Altabella, Altabella, who was really popular anti-post, and uh, Lucia. Maybe the better ground might help her get close to uh, Iberico Lord. But we can't give away uh, only a matter of time. I don't think the punters are trusting him that he'll run through those hurdles. He's a loony, isn't he? Well, he is a bit of a loony. I, I half wonder whether going this way around... You, you, Let's start with him, Willie Mullins, of course, Paul Byrne, come over. He was supposed to go close in the Greatwood. He, he obviously was cruising when he jinked out of that hurdle. You tend to find a reason for why they might bounce back, if you like. Yeah, he's done twice in a row now, isn't he? Yeah. And it was a right-handed track when he did it at the time before. So, so um, yeah, no, 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 he'd be off my wish list for sure. And I all just right. couldn't, couldn't have him at all. Let's look at this race because, uh, you know, he's got... Uh, all the right stables are there, aren't they? We've got the Jerry Field and winner and side as well. Out of Valley has been definitely an anti post mover. Iberico Law, we're hearing the right people have been backing that one of three for Nicky Henderson. It's not the buzz that I've been told, though, from the Hendo stable. No, well, there's, there's all sorts of gossip. It is the buzz that I've been told, but I mean, where, you know. I mean, I, I, my information would be like ninth hand, like, you know, Chinese whispers, so I wouldn't have the faintest idea. You know, the yeah. one thing they said when he won the Great Wood, and let's face, let's face it, the performance worked out really well. Yeah, he cruised right? through that as well. Right? He, he, he cruised through the race, but, then, you know, Nick had a bomber got off him and said, we knew he'd love the ground, we knew he'd love the hill. All right? So, obviously, it's soft ground at Cheltenham, all right? and it's a much, much easier two miles uh, Ascot because basically it's, it's effectively a furlong shorter yeah. uh, on good ground. Important to get and that out there. He has only won, I said it's only won once on faster than soft ground and he was, and he was well beaten. So that worries me. Alta Belly, I'm surprised at the money about Alta Belly given the ground because he's said to be a big horse who needs it hot deep. Watch uh, it back you know, on your so, members club. He had a blow and then ran on yeah, again. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah, but he, he's supposed to need it really deep and he looks like he does. So I, yeah. was, I was trying to find, you know, do I like this? Do I like that? And I ended up, I nearly, I nearly put up Hansard, who I think was probably half the odds he is now. And he seems to have been a massive drinker. And I ended up coming down. Uh, on the horse that won the county hurdle last year, whose name actually <laughs> escapes me at the moment. Favoir. I'm getting a Favoir, that's it. <laughs> Favoir. Now, obviously Thank we, you. We're obviously, obviously we know 2039 uh, and he's uh, in the yeah, geriatric yeah, home. I'm, I'm, I'm getting very, very old. <laughs> didn't, he, didn't he go out last night? <coughs> I believe that um, if, you, if, you, if you want to read know, the uh, You know, obviously Dan Skelton wins loads of these two-mile handicap hurdles, doesn't he? Right, and he's won two of these, both for double-figure price winners. One of them, Mo Hayed, won it eight months after winning the county hurdle. No, sorry, nine months after winning the county hurdle, off a six pound higher mark. Yeah. Favoir is already down to just three pound higher than when he won the county. Uh, and he's obviously been eight, eight pound higher as well, and he was second here last time. Bridget so Andrews is the key to these also, don't she? With, really? with a lot of bookmakers betting four places, I couldn't resist a bit of 25 to one. Yeah, look, the case is there to be made, isn't it? And you're 100%. Uh, obviously, the, he, they've got a line through Knickerbocker Glory, haven't they? And, uh, is, is that what it's called? Yeah, Glory? I mean, you know, he's, an, he's an in and out horse, but he's got the ability to be a player at the prices. Yeah, they, 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 as in connections, thought Bab was going to go really well at Ascot yesterday, and he, he, he really didn't enjoy that drawing tacky ground. He's mm. soft, isn't he? He's still, he, he probably is a bit. Oh, I thought he could do quite well to get third actually, because he was scrubbing him along from yeah, six was, out, yeah. but. That form has been let down slightly. Uh, it hasn't it worked has, out yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, and while right. Belly right. might be the horse to take out the race, I would worry slightly about the ground at that price as well. G. I thought the form was good. You're with Belly. I'm with Altabelli. All right. Bad, yes. Didn't run brilliantly yesterday, but he ran pretty well against Hansard behind him in the yeah. in the Jerry Field. And the eighth was Rare Middleton. That's one since. They went a solid pace. Oh. They went a solid pace throughout the whole race that day. Nick Glory and you one You are other searching thing. for that winner down that fall. Uh, <laughs> Nick Glory is a filthy example. Nick Glory kicked off the bend. Alter Belly was caught out of his ground, I think. He was making ground on him towards the line. That's course and distance form. I like it. He's been obviously absolutely hammered in the market, but I think he'll improve for that run. He's got like, just one yeah. pound. Yeah, one we, pound for that yeah, win. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm a big fan of Alter Belly. I like him. I'm scared about the ground because 
you know, they've said all along he's a big horse. He wants he wants to get his toe in. If uh, yeah. if you like your Barrico Lord, you you've got to be having if, a. If saver they were worried on, about on the, the ground, yeah. they wouldn't be running him. Yeah, Lucia will love everything about this. I think they won it with Jenkins was it a couple of years of ago. Let's wait and see if they do. Mm, yeah, they it, it's not. a belter though, isn't it? Four oh, places we're getting. All right, and there are the tips for you. I'm on Lucia. I think she'll go really, really well. Uh, it's out of belly for you and I'm trying to nick one of the four places with Favre. Twenty-five. About about age. 50, is he? How old is he? Eight. <laughs> so, oh, he's eight. Oh, he's a youngster then. Really, Listen, proper, don't have a go at these veterans, yeah. all right? You come on, you, you, you're, you're turning into one yourself. All right, OK. We must move on. And everyone's favourite waits on the line for us now. Last week, if you saw David Jennings, his tonsils were flaring up. His beard was a-growing. Let's check out the state of our deputy Irish editor. Hello, DJ. Oh, look at this. Look, back in the game, my man. Just in time for the big day. Yeah, I'm a male model once again, Dave. The The beard has been shaved and uh, I'm feeling much better, thank God. God, I was rough last Saturday morning. I have to apologise to viewers. You don't want to be waking up looking at that every Saturday morning, let me tell you. DJ, this is, of all the Irish angles, going to be a real fun one because you literally, over in Ireland, want this day to be done over here, get Christmas out of the way, and this is what we wait for, Jumps fans, every year. Yeah, it's it's the, the four days at Leperson are terrific. And I suppose a little bit different in Ireland to England in that we do have the four days at Leperson. It's a proper festival vibe. I know you have the two at, at Kempton, but ours lingers on like, like an Irish wedding. It lingers on for a bit longer than an English one. And uh, it's a terrific meeting. And um, just the decks are rolling through there this morning for, for the 26th and the 27th. A few disappointing fields, only four in the racing post office chase. The final racing post novice chases it's going to be axed next year as part of a, a revamp of the Ooh. of the program uh, but still we have facile vega taking on founder 50 and uh, we've got some cracking racing on the 27th as well with the, the feature paddy power chase listen you lead the way we'll follow we're going to open it up to kills and g i know you're on the sofa with let's have this lovely chat for everyone out there what are we most looking forward to seeing i suppose first and foremost because this is almost overwhelming it's like going to barcelona and trying to pick the best restaurant right it's scary yeah, but the only thing is we've got Messi. We've got Messi in Leopardstown on Thursday. We've got the Savills Chase. We've got the best race of the season. And it's funny how this has developed, Dave. Like, if I was speaking to you last week, it looked at that stage like um, like Jerry Colon was going to go to the King George. That gradually changed as the week went on. And now that Gordon Elliott has committed Jerry Colon to the Savills Chase, you've got the top three in the market for the Cheltenham Gold Cup taking each other on at Leopardstown on Thursday in the Savills Chase. So, like, to have an actual gold cup to have three proper horses taking each other on before Cheltenham. It's almost unheard of these days. I know Keels has been writing plenty of columns about it saying we need more of these clashes before Cheltenham. We can't be focusing on Cheltenham. And this is one race where the emphasis is not on Cheltenham, it's on Leopardstown. And, and they've all committed now. They've all committed. So we'll be surprised if, if fast or slow gallop at the Champs or Jerry or Jerry Clum doesn't turn up. And then you've got the likes of Envoy LN. You've got Aplu Tara is 20 to 1. Oh yeah, Maximus won the Irish Grand National last year and the Drimmore, he's in there as well. So that for me, and I think for everybody, is the race of the Christmas period. It is an absolute corker. And I'd be very interested to see on off the cuff now, putting the lads on the spot, G-Rod and, and Keels, to see what they fancy in it. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to give Gallop in the shop another chance. I know he's fab. I think, still think he deserves to be. Uh, I think that comeback run last time, everyone goes on about a Gold Cup breaking horses. It's a load of rubbish. All right. You've got to remember, that race, that, that John Durkin was three weeks earlier, was it, this year than last? Just wasn't ready. He'd be ready. I mean, Jerry you Colum, say what surely. year are we in? It's almost Jerry like... Oh, Jerry Colomb does it, surely, Colum's don't he? no good, is he? He's the most exciting can, staying chaser in Britain and Ireland right now, eight months on or whatever it is from the Gold Cup kills and said, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to give another chance to gallop into Champs. It's unbelievable yeah. the way it's gone, isn't yeah. it? Well, all right, yeah. Jerry Colomb's oh, Colum's form isn't all that good, is he? He just wins, What's though, kills. All that good, He just he? wins. He's really good. He's only beaten the real wacker, hasn't he? No. No, no, he actually got beaten by the real wacker. Oh, so he got beat by the real wacker, yeah. But don't you think real wacker... Well, we'll leave that. But real wacker could win, couldn't he, the King George, no? Well, he's obviously mm. over here with us. Let's stick with Ireland for the time being, if you don't mind, G-Rod. I'm going <laughs> come on. I've got it all going on here. All right, so, uh, so, so Galloping, you're not with... Uh, you're I'm with Jerry. Jerry Colomb, oh, I'm with yeah. Jerry all the way. All the I way. Think, I think he'll do well to finish third. What's oh, the ground going to be on. like, first and foremost, DJ? Because Nick, <laughs> Nick Luck was on... A, I think it'd be third. Quick. Nick Luck was on earlier, talking about how Brian Atchison, you know, and they all want to go for the better ground and all that, and turf tracks coming out. What are we expecting? 
ground. Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. There's a lot of rain forecast Christmas Eve here, which is tomorrow. And Christmas Day is kind of wet enough. It's, is it Christmas Eve tomorrow probably... in Ireland as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, yeah. DJ. <laughs> Breaking, news. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking yeah. news. Well, I'm just wondering, as Keel's turning into... He's spending so much time with G-Rod now, he's actually turning into G-Rod. So he is, with these controversial claims that Jerry Colon will do well to finish third in the Savills chase. That is... That is one of the, the statements of the season, I think, Keels. Uh, I don't think that's controversial at all. We'll wait and see. All right, OK. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the novice races. I mean, not the maidens and stuff, DJ. We haven't seen the decks uh, developing as you have. Everyone looks forward to seeing what Marlins and Elliot and Debrahm and all the big power stables might be bringing to the table there. One clash that I've been watching anti-post future race on the William Hill out all through December is who's going to turn up on the 27th of his future champions novice hurdle. And I am for once really torn because I'm a huge down memory lane fan as uh, I've been telling everyone since we did the big jump off in October he's the one for me the second coming but I wasn't half impressed with Daddy Longlegs when he made his hurdling debut as well yeah that's going to be a cork and I was wondering would Firefox run here but he but he doesn't uh they've, they've went with down memory lane and uh it's a fascinating race like absurd is in there would you believe uh, absurd the Ebor winner who ran so well and the in the in the Melbourne Cup for a long way, Caldwell Potter, Daddy Longlegs down memory lane, facile mode, Predators goal like Predators goal looked like a world beater. I thought of Punchestown maybe needs further smooth Tom, the big Diane and Westport Cove. So that race will definitely shake up the supreme market because down memory lane is one of these horses that we know so little about. Won his bumper very easily, then he went to down Royal and he won his maiden hurdle. And it was an awful maiden hurdle. But he absolutely bolted up. And you know sometimes when you watch a race and you know the, the actual quality of the race isn't that good, but you know you're watching a quality animal. And just the way he moved through the race and the way I, Gordon talks about him, Derek O'Connor actually keeps the ride, which is interesting to see. Yes. Derek obviously you know, was involved in the purchasing of the horse and, and knows a lot about him. So it's a big day for Derek O'Connor, one of our leading amateurs. He keeps the ride in the, in the future Champions Novice Hurdle. So... I kind of I kind of want down memory lane to win because he's kind of a sexy fast you know a real potential horse that could be anything and, and if he wins this impressively he'll be favored for the supreme I think if him or daddy longlegs did happen to to absolutely bolt up I think either one would be favored for the supreme afterwards so it's it's going to be a real real interesting race it's going to move markets yeah, I think we're looking at the winner of the Supreme here as well, whatever comes out on it. That's great, DJ. My nap of the whole entire festive period is Captain Guinness. Can't wait to see him back over two miles. I think he's going to remind John Bond and El Fabiano exactly what he's got. What about yourself? Yeah, I just see he's taken on. This. There's only five in that, and the other four are from the Willie Mullen stables. So this is one of the problems we have in Irish race, and only two stables represented in a grade one is a little bit worrying. And, it, you know, uh, Dysart Dynamo, Gentleman, the Me, Santua, and Dino Blue are the other four that are taking on Captain Guinness. Just stamina is my one worry for Captain Guinness. He's so fast, two mile one. If Gentleman to Me did happen to go pretty fast at Leperstown, I just worry that those last 100 yards. But I'd say Class will probably get him home because I know Henry thinks he just barely gets the two miles, but he should be better than these. So you'd imagine he'd win. Speaking of Henry de Bromhead, look, I just love the Paddy Power chase. It's one of the, the handicaps of the season that you, you try and figure out weeks beforehand. And I watched the showcase meeting at Cheltenham back in October and I came away saying to myself, am I right is going to win the Paddy Power chase? Um he just was so fizzy and fresh that day and, and did far too much too soon. Uh, this is a good horse that's well handicapped. Rachel Blackmore rides. She, it seems to be stable number one. Um, if he's not better than a mark of 138, I, I'd be very, very surprised. And I just think Leperson really suits him. He ran in the grade one novice chase last year, that Gayer de Manil one. And I know it was very early. He fell down the back straight, but he was absolutely loving it and tanking. And I would say ever since that day in the back of Henry de Bromhead's mind, he's had, right, let's return next year, December 27, for the Paddy Power Chase. And, uh, you know, we had two horses that ran really well in this race last year. And I think he might win it this year. I'm very sweet on that by right. I thought 40 to 1 was a massive price. Yeah, you are. OK, DJ, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you since we started the morning show, man. Uh, we've got a quick social for you before we go, I'm hearing as well. The boys are, DJ should be in Westlife. <laughs> I mean, everyone's favourite is right, isn't it? I mean, uh, we've never had a comment like that, have we? Um, no. Oh, I think I think the I think the word we're looking for there, Dave, is sarcasm. 
Yeah. You, you do yeah. look, I don't know, you probably, uh, is, is that a karaoke number one for you? I can, I've heard about I'm, I'm, karaoke. I'm bloody, I'm too ugly to sing in my own house, never mind <laughs> join a band. <laughs> Lots of nodding going on from the kids behind you, I would imagine. DJ, like I say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. You really lift the shows each morning. To you and the family, have a great Christmas, man. It is on Monday, DJ, that's breaking news as well. And uh, St. Stephen's Day comes your way. Look, can't wait to see what you're going to be firing out in the paper, man. Yeah, enjoy your Christmas Eves tomorrow, boys. <laughs> Which, of course, is tomorrow. <laughs> DJ, brilliant stuff. All right, let's crack on, shall we, as we bid farewell to our favourite deputy Irish editor. All right, uh, am I right then, basically, is the nap in the Paddy Power Chase. Right, Cheltenham competition. I believe there is something coming up your way. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Decks being the topical word more than ever because I just hope we've got them. We're going to have now with no sizzling Sunday for you, unless you want to go to Le Compiègne, of course, or Hanshin or somewhere like that, which is absolutely all right. Uh, there will be no betting now, of course, until Boxing Day after today, St. Stephen's Day, if you're in Ireland. What a card it looks to be. Grade ones are plenty all over the place, not just in Ireland, but here as well. Which market are we starting with? Let's get it up. Uh, Johnny, the Corto Star Novice Chase, Grade 1. They're talking about Irish being the most important racing with the spring in mind over Christmas. A lot of people would debate that because at five-day deck time, it looked absolutely sumptuous. What have we got? Well, we've got uh, six declared. Uh, a little touch disappointing in the Irish horses haven't come over, but we've got the, the French monster, Ile Francais, uh, Hermé Allen, and Giovinco, uh, 33 bar. So Ile Francais, 6 to 5, Hermé Allen, 5 to 2, and Giovinco, 11 to 4. That has just gone out on the market. The lads have just turned that round in the last 10 minutes. 6 to 5, please, Johnny. Ile Francais, Noel George, and Amanda Zetholm have got an absolute worldie here. They think. The absolute world of this, like I say, he's massively impressed me. I've obviously been on Sky watching a bit of his French racing over the last couple of months, and he would be, along with Thelem, the best I've seen anywhere bit of a throw, over the a land. throwback, this, isn't it? Um, in the past, of course, we always used to get a good French runner and King George Day. Yeah, de Cochet. Yeah, Francois Dumain, and always used to bring over the fellow. And, and now we've got Ile Francais, who um, our French handicapper... Melrose oh. assures me is not any good. And then in that no case, good. no good. <laughs> Increase the confidence. <laughs> yeah, no good. Uh, has got a lot to find on RPRs, uh, according to Melrose. One last time at one to five. Yeah. Or, or toy. He's, a, he's a grade one winner over hurdles. And obviously he's got load of one by his name. I don't know how good he is or not, but Mel Rowe tells me no good. They're purring with confidence, and quite rightly so. I, I, I've just... I've, well, I mean, you know, it's one of those things, right? We are not experts in French racing. Hang on a minute. I get, well, I get paid to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I maintain that. Uh, <laughs> a cruel blow. A cruel <laughs> Christmas blow from Gilles there. Uh, well, I'm certainly not an expert in French racing. I don't know how good Ile Fonsley is. I do think Hermes, Allen and Giovinco are both very good. And... Mm. I think Giovinco just got beat by a very, very good, very, very hardy horse in uh, Stay Away Fay. I think they're both two, two very good horses. Yeah, I wouldn't agree. knock him for that. And the way he travelled, he might just like Kempton. Yeah. Uh, so he interests me. But, I mean, Hermes Allen, for a horse they couldn't even school uh, a few weeks before uh, he made his debut at at Newbury and was in badly need of the run. He really impressed me. He was weak in the market, he wasn't he, that day? Really, he hosed up. He really impressed me. He absolutely hacked up. So I'm just favouring Hermes Allen. I don't know how good Ile Francais is. Don't feel uh, confident enough to say that he's no good. But I am pretty sure that Hermes Allen and Giovinco are pretty good. I'm a massive Giovinco fan. I said at the start of the season he was in my five to follow. I, I was... I was as impressed with him. I think obviously it was unfortunate what happened to him at Carlisle, wasn't it? At, at, New, at Aintree, there weren't any fences. He looked like he had stay away Fay in a lot of trouble. They both spiked in the market, didn't they, and running and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to oppose him here, though. Who are you with? 
I'm with the French or so. Visually, I don't think I've seen him on oh, the you, you, you think he time. is good? I think he's very, very good. Yeah. I think he'd be one of the strongest bets think? at Christmas. I think that Hermes Alain will win this race. Uh, he jumped well at Newbury. Has he got a thought going this way around? Oh, huge me. engine, hasn't he? Does he usually go left handed? Wouldn't worry too much about that. It's a bit early in Just his curious. career. Just curious. I'm looking at career, in. isn't it? To, to make any firm conclusions. Oh, yeah, to look for you. Yeah, thank you very I much, Kills, if you don't mind. Loads of people out there typing away, mm. no doubt. Paul Nichols obviously got an amazing record in the race, hasn't yep. he? Always runs his best one in it. And uh, Hermes Alain, I think, will win this. And we'll see him next year here back for the King George. <laughs> uh, I really do like Jimmy. We're going down Poe. the Clanders Oboe route with Clanders him, are we? Clanders Oboe and Brave Man's Game. And oh, time and time uh, again, aren't it, they? It's all left handed. I couldn't tell you about the point to point tracks. Mm. There you go. All right. Yeah. Just something in my mind, I'm, I'm trying to sort of pick holes in Hermes and spot. I, I actually went with him when he drifted at, at mm. Newbridge, spot hearing that he hadn't gone out. I just thought it was best horse in racing. He, he certainly won very impressive. If you listen to Harry Cobden, he absolutely purrs about him, doesn't he? So Yeah, I mean, Giovinco is very good horse and he'll travel well through this race, won't no. he? It's just, I just think Hermes and then might have too He much just looks like he's a year or two off for me still, Giovinco. Mm. I think he's still got he's a, big a little sort of bit of maturing to do, yeah. Mm. A lot at the very, very top level. But it, it, it's a great race, isn't it? Uh, utterly mouthwatering, as will the other clashes be, of course. And uh, we're hearing that six stand their ground then, uh, Johnny the Judge. Let's, uh, th let's go to you, Johnny. Uh, what was it, Alaho? We knew he was coming over, didn't we? Is the market maturing now? Are you getting ready to put your head above the parapet? Yeah, not a great uh, change from yesterday. We sort of knew that these six would be declared. Uh, Alaho 13 to 8, Brave Man's Game 2, Shishkin 5, The Real Wacker 8, Kirik 14 and uh, Old Frodon 33. Uh, but we'll be, take, we'll be taking on Brave Man's game uh, come Boxing Day. We think he's left his race behind at Taydock. So we'll be, we'll, make sure you check out tonight. We'll be top price Brave Man's game. I'll tell you what, Johnny the Judge, Jamie McBride, everyone at Hills, they can't stand Brave Man's game. Every time he runs, they try and boost him. They try and get him beaten. It was the, obviously the king, uh, obviously last year's winner, of course. And what, 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 what is the problem this year going into this before we talk about the mighty Irish Raider? Uh, the problem, when he looked like he was going to win at Weatherby, he may have been getting tired. He was, you know, it was a case of, you know, was he quite was he quite ready? Was he fully fit? He wouldn't have been fully fit because he was being geared up for this. Uh, and then you know, Paul Nichols, he, he throw him in again because he can see he can see a prize there for the taking in the Betfair Chase. And maybe it was maybe it was a bit too soon. Maybe he wasn't quite right. Maybe the ground was too soft. Who knows? What he's got here is Kempton, which he obviously really likes and ground which is going to be far more suitable to him. So I'm certainly not ruling him out. I, I don't, uh, I, I'm not one of those who believes we've already seen the best of him. I and mean, we know with Paul Nichols how many times he brings horses back to the boil again yeah. and again and again. So, so I, think, I think he's still going to be a massive player. I agree with this. I think the ground's turning in his favour. There was a little bit of a dark cloud over some breed, but uh, we yeah. think that Kempton will be a sound surface. Yeah, I mean, I really fancy Brave Man's game. The fact that Alaho's coming is just a bonus because he's going to boost the price up on Brave Man's game. He doesn't game, lose, though, Alaho, does he? He's, he is just a winning machine. He's, well, like a, he's an equine cash that's point. That's true, but, you know, when he won first time up at Clonmel, it was a Mickey Mouse race and they went no pace and... I, I did, wasn't entirely convinced that he had loads left in the tank going past the line. And he was a tired horse, for a sure. A long, long absence he was coming off. And there's, there's going to be a lot of pace in this race again, and the Alaho will be going up, throwed on, the real whacker will be bang there. You know, he's going to have to be right. He's peaked to land this race. Does Alaho. that worry you, Kills, about Alaho, the, 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 the taxing of the stamina? Of course, we've mentioned... Uh, Clander Zobo, who was the King George star. I mean, you know, I mean, he, he, he outstayed him, didn't he? No, I mean, he... he, he he definitely stays three mile now. Um, the the Alaho that won those two Ryanairs, if anything tries to take it on, is going too quick mm. because well, that'll be Frodon, wouldn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, Frodon's past his best now, as we know. Uh, yeah, if Alaho no is at his way. absolute best, Love him, but he's if Alaho's no at his absolute best, he is the one to beat, isn't he? Oh, yeah. But we've got limited evidence. We've got one run in eighteen months. Uh, or so, and again, uh, a, a horse finishing tired in a free runner race. I know he won it easily in the end. It'd be one of those, you know, you've got that bounce worry. Uh, Nichols, so. Nichols for sure will be saying to Bryony on Frodon, don't let him yeah, have an 100%. easy time. Get up yeah, there your with him and... eyebrows moved when we were talking about Frodon. What was that about, or were you just twitching? Well, no, I mean, he's, he's great all around Kempton, isn't he? He loves it, he jumps really well, but he's, he's surely too old, isn't he? Like a lot of kills his tips today. He'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> you said you've never seen a more kills was, column, was, did you? I was almost going to tip him just for the sake of it. <laughs> uh, but he, he, he obviously loved the ground, and it's great to see the old warrior here, one of the most, you know, 
popular horses over the last couple of seasons. Um, all right, tips then. Brave man's game. I've got a feeling I might be going brave man's game as well. For I'm low I'm to go against game. that. I'm brave man's game. All right, yeah. there we're, we're being brave. Unanimous. We're playing the game. All right, okay. Yeah, oh, she's we haven't said a word about Shishkin. Have we? Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, yeah. Shishkin. Um, it's a strange one, isn't it? It's a why, side. Do, why didn't they just give him a run? I mean, you know, the other day. What did they do? Take him for a gallop or something? Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, supposed it's been to be away, de- I think. In desperate, in desperate need of a run, and then didn't run him. I mean, it didn't, wouldn't matter just plodding around two miles at Ascot. Small gallop, field will help him, wouldn't it? Uh, Sandown. Um, small field may help. I think so. I just see that there's so many really good jumpers in this race, mm. and he's going to belt a couple, isn't he's he? He's got a cracking Kempton record. He's a good, oh, he's a good horse. Oh. Listen, Cheskin's an excellent horse, as he's no doubt about it. An that. imperious horse. Uh, what moves are you going to be in? We don't know. And I just see, I just All see right. that he's going to make mistakes. Mm. Uh, Johnny, we've got Constitution Hill coming back out and strutting his stuff. A lot of people will be talking about how to play the race, all that sort of thing. We expect him to win, of course. It's great that he's coming back. Uh, just give us a price, uh, sort of what estimation you think he might go off, and what is he currently with Hill, sort of big one again in March. Uh, he's four to nine for the Champion Hurdle. Uh, he's around the ten on mark for the Christmas Hurdle. It's- Let's be honest, it's not really a betting uh, proposition at all. Um, maybe the length in your odds, how far do you think you might win by, but uh, it's more a, a market and a race just to watch and enjoy a really good horse. Well, the best horse, Johnny, I think, absolutely. And um, it, it, uh, as I've really enjoyed saying in the run-up to when, I was, again, should he have run, I don't know, at Sandown? Probably not, I think, actually, because they were walking through that ground at the end. I, I was quite glad he didn't turn up in the end, actually. I'm really looking forward to seeing him here like the rest of the planet are. But he's racing against history now, isn't he? Yeah. And he's got to get up the ratings, and like the, the very top rating. And oh, I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah, he's racing. Yeah, they're not going to... I wouldn't have thought they're going to try and win this by 30 lengths just to go up the ratings, are they? If, 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 if he shoots up the ratings, it'll be for winning at Cheltenham, not for not for beating these round here. Is, is, what I mean, I know he won it by an absolute mile last year, but that sort of fell in a hole that race as well. He didn't even, he didn't even have to. He wasn't actually his foot perfect best in this last year. If you look watch it back, the replay two out. He actually, by his own standards, was a bit fiddly. Yeah, Mason had him lower, didn't he, for this win than he did for his first time win at. Yeah, but he's not. You know, they're not going to. He probably win by fifteen lengths on the bridle, but they're not going to push him out to win by thirty. There's no need for them. Are we going to see him pair of pass over Christmas? And, well, yeah. Cheltenham maybe on New Obviously Year's Obviously, Statement will be soon. Yes, yeah, of course. Mm, possible two and a half oh, miles. That'd be a tasty, so tasty good, morsel, wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it? Be good. But at the moment, all roads lead to uh, to, to to another champion. Odell, quite rightly so. He's an absolute world. He's the best jumper on the planet, and he's back. Right, okay, like, subscribe, comment and share, guys. We know you're watching out there. Welcome along to the Morning Post. If you've only just got up and you're feeling a little bit hungover, get your kippers out of the way. Come on, time for some winners coming up. The Naps are after our uh, final look at the Christmas showpieces. We're going to go to the 27th of December. It's the Welsh champion hurdle. Ah, the national market. So close, so close to the end of the show. And I really like one here. Johnny the Judge, I'm going to let you tell me the prices and then I'm going to log in. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd fancy many of these over hurdles. I might trip over them. Uh, <laughs> Super Survivor has been really popular at 92. Uh, that form ties in with Autonomous Cloud for Fergo O'Brien. Uh, but the, the mover since Dex, obviously Monbeg Genius was taken out. Uh, I don't know if people are just putting two and two together here, but uh, Iron Bridge uh, is eight from 12 uh, in the last day or so. Ooh, OK. All right, then. So a tasty morsel indeed. And yes, it is over the big uh, jumps. Uh, you really like one here. Get it out of the way. Yeah, I think Super Survivor is one of the bets of the festive period, Dave. I'm taking you on. Oh, I yeah. mean, I'm not being that original. I think Autonomous Cloud is going gonna, is gonna to lap this up. I, I am very confident that it'll be bang there, jump in the last. In front. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just watched his race the other day, you know. You know. I didn't think it was much of a what race. What was not to like about it? I didn't it. think it was much of a race, to be honest. He, they, two of, the two of them came down. He's. I, I thought the. I, I thought the handy. Yeah, but he was. He was cruising. Now, what the about time. the ground, chaps? Because we're talking about dry ground all all week, and then suddenly, when Chepstow's in the forecast, a little bit of rain Monday, Tuesday, and then from. Uh, Pretty much midnight on Tuesday night. <laughs> the 30, depths of Wales is about to. 35 to 40 mils of rain falling before midday. Yeah. <laughs> so, if any track can take it, it'll be Chepstow. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, you've got to take that in around. It could be bottomless, even though it's only good to soft at the moment. So Suits my else. lad. Suits uh, my lad. It'll suit my lad as well. I think the big breakaway has been, been completely <laughs> overlooked because... 
because of what happened at Aintree. There's a theme this show is about. Is he doing it again? He's only eight. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's been, only eight. been around forever, though, haven't he? <laughs> Honestly. Right, well, I'll tell you what, the other one I like is Nashalam. He's been around forever and he's only six. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, which is remarkable. But he no, didn't uh, have to win uh, last Listen, time. the big breaker, he quite clearly hated um, the national fences. He just backed off and wasn't... It just wasn't weird, him. isn't he? He was second to a very, very well handicapped horse in this race last year. And, you know, he's, he's, he's handicapped to go really well and I think he will. Nasser Lamb was a horse for me. Nasser Lamb was the first time in his life he got the comment, jumped well. Jumped straight. In blinkers at Chepstow. He absolutely bolted up. Uh, you know, I wish he'd run like that when I was lumping on him for the Ultima last year. Yeah. Not, I'm still not sure he would have beaten Kite, Rambler, or Fast or Slow, mind. But um, if he stays, he's got to be very interested on that run because he just looked like he took the Chepstow like a duck to water. Yeah. And that was heavy ground that day as well. And, of course, that was the trial, which has got a very good record for this race, actually. Mm. All right, that's it. The questive wrap is over. We've looked at all the best stuff in Ireland. Wasn't that great to have DJ on? We've given you our thoughts on the three big show pieces at Kempton on Boxing Day and the Welsh spectacular that is the national and uh, autonomous cloud for me. Uh, to blow them away. There's the line for you. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, the Christmas naps are coming up. All right, okay, just before the naps then, uh, competition winner time. Uh, and uh, you, okay, so it was who wanted to win four tickets to the Aintree? Yes, we're up at Aintree on Boxing Day. We haven't got chat about it, it's because we've now got the Formby Hurdle. Yeah, the old Tolworth. Yeah. The old Tolworth doesn't exist anymore at no. Sandown. Uh, and again, Nicky Henderson's had a lot to say about this, hasn't he? Well, yeah, I haven't really moaned because he's, he won over and wanted to run at Sandown. What a really tough luck. You go. Go and run it up there. I bet he still nearly wins it. Well, you know, I haven't got I haven't got a problem with the race being moved. To be honest, you know, I mean, it's a it takes place in the first week in January normally at Sandown in an a yeah. absolute bog. Yeah. Uh, and only ever gets four or five runners. We've so asked for innovation and we've got know, it, haven't we? Don't get me wrong, I love yeah. Sandown. I go to the meeting every every year, but but um, I think you'll end up with a better class of field uh, on on better ground. I bet the whole of Liverpool is loving the fact they've got a card on Boxing Day as well, as will be. Drum roll, please. OK, you also get a £25 free bet with William Hill as well. Dave Dewey, congratulations to you. Harry James, Karen Mayer, Aaron McGee and Adam Wright. They are the five lucky winners. See you on Boxing Day, says Andrew Dietz and David Carr will probably be our reporters up there. Enjoy it out there, why don't you? OK, great stuff. Love giving stuff away here. Shall we do the naps now? Let's go to Johnny the Judge. He's got a you know, a better judge reputation than you have, despite the fact you're hot. I know you're going to come unstuck this week, and this is our You're skills. waiting for it, aren't you? I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Like people are for a winning nap from me, of course. Let's get the naps up and tell us the boost as you're going along. Johnny Simpson. Uh, the nap today is uh, Git Maker. I can't really make a, a better case than uh, what G-Rod did for him. I think he's got an excellent chance. I'll be having a related double with Super Survivor to win the Welsh National. So, Git Maker, and he has been boosted out to 11 to 2. 11 to 2 for the old Git then in the 3 o'clock. And yes, ho, ho, ho from Dave Orton. Look no further than the 250. This is the one that gets me over the line. Unit 64 has been bursting for a run. Ben Pauling, he's a really good horse first time out. The owners group, they're all looking forward to this one. I think he'll be winning that 250. Uh, Keels. Uh, this old Git is going for a very, very, very lovable old timer in Paisley Park. You nearly called him a git, didn't you? Yeah, I can't do you that. nearly called can't him do a git. That. Love him. All right, you've been giving him, you know, pearlers all all yeah. day about his tips. What's, They'll what's all win gonna, now, won't yeah, they? Yeah, fourth, <laughs> what's going to be the fourth winning nap in a row? I can't believe I'm saying that on the show. From Graham Robway. It's Bill Baxter, one thirty at Haydock. All right, OK. There you are, the festive naps. It's been real fun having you for the past hour and so here on the Morning Post. We'll be back on the 30th, previewing everything that's about to come up over New Year and another big Saturday from you. Johnny Simpson, Merry Christmas for you. And we've been enjoying you in that betting cave up there, mate. You keep coming back. Merry Christmas, guys. Best of luck. All the best. Another old git, northern git up there. Uh, G-Rod, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Yeah, Welcome have a great on. One. Have a good Christmas, Dave. I'm looking forward to today and then Boxing Day. Yeah, when are you next back? In, 
in two the weeks. New year? Two weeks time. In the All New right. Year, yeah. All right, good so that stuff. Sandown meeting that Kills has, has been yep. hanging on about. Are you coming? I will. Yeah, I'll come. It's my birthday yeah. that weekend. Oh, that sounds birthday dangerous. Birthday celebrations. Excellent. That's Kills, Sandown. always a pleasure. Thanks for coming in on this yeah, no festive problem. Saturday. All no right. Problem. Lovely to have you out there. Don't forget, keep liking, subscribing, commenting, shares. Loads more coming your way over the festive period here at the Racing Post. From everyone on the Morning Post and at William Hill, it's a very Merry Christmas to you all.